doing something different today. Yeah, very different. You may have noticed we're on the move in our own RV. We're in here testing out the ride before we get the independent suspension put in by More Ride, which we're doing now. And then we're going to do a test ride after and see the difference. Oh, yeah. This is Whoa, that's a big test. <laughs> Back at Moorride and it's cold. <laughs> we'll even go north in November for uh, for a good suspension. You guys know we normally head south this time of year, but oh, yeah. this is worth it. And a lot of you have been anticipating this video just as much almost as we've been anticipating getting it done. Yeah. So here we are for the independent suspension and disc brake upgrade. Many of you reached out to us after our last video here at Moorride where we got the slide trays, the steps, and the new pin box. Mm -hmm. And you asked us about the independent suspension. So that's what we're doing. That's right. You might notice, no wheels. Look, Ma, no wheels. I think you're in front of the no wheels. No wheels. All right, we are inside the sales showroom, and we have a face that you guys might recognize from our last More Ride Upgrades video. This is Jack Enfield, and he is the sales and marketing manager. Sorry, manager. Gosh darn it. <laughs> I, you know, I already forgot. You already screwed it up. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of you have obviously seen the independent suspension. A lot of you have reached out to us to see if we have it. A lot of you have reached out to tell us how awesome it is and how much you love it. But we wanted to get word from the actual uh, experts on what it is about this suspension that makes it so much better than just your standard leaf springs. And yeah, like and that. he's an expert because he's been with the company for 32 years. Is that right? 32 years. Yeah. 32 years. Wow. So he knows what he's talking about. If you were to describe this suspension to somebody who has a regular suspension, what would be the key things that you would say make it better than leaf springs and axles? Sure. So Moride manufactures suspension system for a wide range of trailers from lower price all the way up to high end. We kind of think of it like a good, better, best proposition. Mm -hmm. And good would be leaf springs. And we always try and improve upon that because roads are rough and we want to protect the trailer from damaging road shock. The independent suspension system is literally the best on the marketplace. Sure. And the reason is, is we're able to get rid of the leaf springs, get rid of the axles, and we allow each wheel to be independent to the road. So right. the way to think about that is if the right tire hits a chuck hole, when you have axles, the left mm -hmm. tire feels it. With the Moride independent suspension system, the right tire hits a chuck hole, the left tire doesn't even know it. So right. the wheels are able to go down the road responding individually to the road bump. Connected with leaf like springs, that. you have the equalizer, so you're right, you're connected all the way around. Whereas with this, we're allowing each wheel to respond individually. The next thing is we use rubber because it's an isolator, it's an absorber, and it travels five and a half inches. Now, most leaf spray yeah. suspension systems travel two inches. So five and a half is much better. Yeah. The way to think about that is you can go down the road and you can hit bumps doing this, or you can hit bumps doing this. And yeah. obviously this is much better. So with five and a half inches of travel, with rubber, cushioning and with independent wheel action, we're literally able to walk over bumps that you would otherwise hit very, very harshly. Right. So the benefit in terms of towing performance is dramatic. It's very significant because it's greater up and down travel. Yeah, that's what we've heard from a lot of you guys and we're super stoked so to try it out. We just took our pre-ride in our RV. So that was very eye-opening and very jaw jarring. We're in the back of our RV for the first time ever. And ever we're in moving. three years. We're doing our pre pre-install uh, test ride. Oh my gosh! Okay. Wow, it's, it, even just this is rougher than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is this is interesting. This is very interesting. Daisy's freaking out. All right, so I'm going to fire up the accelerometer app. Okay. We wanted to do it before and after so we could feel it firsthand. Can you tell how pumped Daisy is? Oh, railroad oh, track's coming up. Sure, we're all tightened down here. Here we go. Oh my god. Wow. This road 
is perfect because it's got just a lot of chatter. And you'll have maybe a mile and a half of this. It's nice that you call it chatter. <laughs> chatter. Oh yeah. Woo! Wow. And just somehow just focus on your feet. Yeah. 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 Like, there's something like this. Woo! Oh chatter. <laughs> Chatterbox. Oh my gosh. I mean, we're a little hard racing. <laughs> What's going on, Daisy? It's okay. It's all right, puppy dog. So now we're going to get on the bike pass. Uh, it's got two bridge expansion joints, which we really look for because what we want to feel is how much do we get the, yeah. the we want to feel is it flexible or not. And you guys will feel it a little bit more back there. Okay. Pick up. Woo! Woo! Because <laughs> <laughs> you know how you hear people say all the time about your home goes through an earthquake every time <laughs> this is you travel, the... and you, now you understand why. This is that earthquake. Yeah. What do you think, Daisy? She hates it. That was interesting. <laughs> I need to sit down and rest after that. It's like you got every muscle tight and then your body. The way we think about the independent suspension system is RVs are houses on wheels mm -hmm. going over rough roads. Mm -hmm. And just like a house needs a strong foundation, well, an RV needs a strong foundation. So the independent suspension system has the strength, but also the performance to really be that solid, secure foundation for your RV. Yeah. And by walking over the bumps, and we have a heavy duty hydraulic shock absorber, so we're gonna yeah, keep those tires from bouncing up and down. And how many times have you heard about broken leaf springs or broken hangers on online and various forums? We had a broken leaf We've spring. had that situation, yep. broken leaf spring. So one of the added benefits of the IS suspension system is we're able to pair it up with whatever type of brakes that you want. Traditional electric brakes are what's used in the industry, but some people want better than that. They yeah. want to be able to stop when they want to stop. We stop well, but there's two settings on the Ford. There's the, the gain and there's also like an assistance or something. We've got both of those on max. And even with six drum brakes, it's still, I would like more stopping power for sure. And you'll get that with the disc brakes. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get roughly 30% shorter stopping distance, mm -hmm. but it's also quieter, it's smoother. It's just a little bit more like a car. Yeah. And so by transforming your running gear from conventional axles to an independent suspension system and electric brakes to disc brakes, mm -hmm. you're really giving yourself that strong foundation to give you the performance and the strength and the stopping distance that you just can't get anywhere else. And now we're just seeing conventional RVers who are just using it because they say, hey, I want something smoother, I want something better, and the independent suspension system offers that. So we're seeing yeah. everything from the uber, uber high-end fifth wheel all the way down to even travel trailers. So how do people normally contact you or set this process up? I know we can obviously contact you here at Elkhart. So you can get the independent suspension system a couple ways. Some of the manufacturers offer it direct from the factory when you're buying a brand new unit, but that's just a small percentage of them. Grand so, Design is one of those, by the way. Grand Design has that hidden special, whereas if you want to order a coach, you can have it installed before it ever gets delivered to the dealer. But most people have to do it in the aftermarket. So they may see us at a show, they may see us at a rally, they may talk to friends. The best way is to come to our factory in Elkhart, Indiana. Uh, we understand that it's in, while it's in the central part of the country, so for some people it's a long drive. Mm -hmm. But if you come here, you're gonna get an expert installation. It's gonna be done 
professionally. It's going to be done right. Done. Other people that actually made it. Made yeah. it yeah, we do it literally every single day. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, it's going to be more economical because we don't have to pay for shipping. We do have a dealer who does a really good job out in Oregon and Grants Pass, Henderson's lineup. The challenge for the West Coast, though, is we have to ship the axles all the way across country. Right. And then the West Coast labor is just a little bit more expensive than the Midwest labor. Mm -hmm. But Henderson's, if you can't come to Elkhart, Henderson's will do a good job. Call us ahead of time because our appointments get scheduled out pretty far. Yeah. But if you come in... We know that. That's why we're here in November. <laughs> <laughs> so if you come to the Elkhart factory, then we're going to have you come in the day before your appointment. Mm -hmm. And we'll do all the measurements ourselves. And that way we'll get it built right in time for installation. If Henderson is doing it, then they have to take some measurements ahead right. of time. They email us and then we build the axles and ship it out west. So right. definitely takes a little bit longer if you're going to do it in Oregon. But if you're coming to Elkhart, we just need you to come in the day before your appointment. We'll take all your measurements and then be ready for your on your appointment. And I think one thing that's neat that you guys do is you allow people to stay in their RV in the facility, right? Obviously just at night, you can't be in there while they're working. We have electrical hookups for them. So they come in the night before, and then even when they're leaving, they can stay an extra night and just use our hookups. When they're here, we're gonna pull them into the bay, and the appointment can take two or three days. And in the evening, if they wanna stay in their RV, we'll give them a key to the building, they can stay inside the RV. Mm -hmm. During the day, we'll need to obviously keep them out of it so we can do the work on it. Then while they're here, we're gonna make the lobby very comfortable. We'll have a refrigerator stock. We we have snacks and then every day we'll buy them lunch and they can just kind of hang out in the lobby or they can go around the county and do the tours of the yeah. manufacturers, go to Shipshawana. We just want to make it comfortable. Yeah. Again, when you walk away from here, we want you to know you have the best product you could get and we want you to know you had the best service that you could get as well. So we're here with Brian. We're going to talk a little bit about what this whole process is like, how they get your old suspension off and the new suspension on. We've been through the first part of it, which is what Jack was talking about, showing up the night before so they can get the measurements to make sure they're not gonna put your RV at like 14 feet in the air, <laughs> things like that. So walk us through that process. Sure, so ideally when you come here, we have a goal to try to get you leaving here with your trailer riding as level as possible post-installation. Right. So in order to do that, we gotta figure out where you're at at first. So that's our first measurement. We ask that you come here with your tow vehicle, and from there we take a what we call a front to rear measurement. Mm -hmm. it's usually it's a little nose high, typically trailers are a little nose high, then we from there add whatever we need to on the build to give you ideally a little bit of boost in the rear so mm -hmm. that we can get you riding level as possible post installation. Right. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that you have the appropriate bed rail clearance because that's dictated when right. you put a new suspension on it. We need to make sure that your height is going to be appropriate. 13.6 is the legal limit right. for a towing fifth wheel. Mm -hmm. So we take your height measurements to make sure that there's no red flags on that front. After that, we get you pulled inside. We take the width of the axles, because that's gonna be custom from trailer to trailer. Mm -hmm. We see several different trailers and frames and right. floor plans. We wanna make sure we steer clear of any water pipes or anything that may be in the way. Once we have it inside and we have all those things measured out, we make sure we get the right spacer, the right riser to, that actually goes directly to the frame. Right. So after that, it's essentially just cutting off all the frame hangers and stuff and right. then welding that riser tube on it. And, and then we weld that, that cross beam that you referred to. So obviously then you just cut hangers off. Yep. I think I saw some grinding and stuff going on in there. Yep, exactly. So you want to be really careful when you're cutting those hangers to make sure that there's no fire hazards. There's no, sometimes, you know, there's no leaks. There's no yeah. hydraulic, some excess hydraulic fluid. We stay clear of all of 
potential fire hazards, insulation, pull all of that back. A manual grinder to sort of smooth out that hanger to make it as smooth as possible. That's where the bulk of the manpower, I would say, comes into play. That's okay. that's kind of the most arduous part of the job is, is that portion. Okay, yeah. And then cutting the risers appropriately sized, fitting it up to that hanger, getting it the right, you know, inward or outward orientation. Right. What do you do with the old leaf springs and capsules? So, good question. If people have space for them, or they're allowed to take them with them, that, that rarely happens, to yeah. be honest with you. You need to ask. Do you, you yeah, watch your yeah, old axles? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I don't even, uh, not, yeah, even no. not even a tiny piece. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so some people do find the space for it. They clear out a cartridge area, or if they have a toy hauler with space in it, they throw them in there and take them with them. Um, otherwise, they essentially, essentially go to scrap. We can't really do anything with them. We can't sure. sell them back to the manufacturer at that right. point because of liability's sake. So yeah, yeah the, all in all, they largely just get scrapped. With that riser tube portion, depending on the size, most cases actually gets a cross member on it as well. So if that's a custom size cross member that fits the length of whatever chassis you have or whatever frame you have. And so once that's all established, then the whole product gets wheeled over with the hanger with the brakes already mounted on it. Oh, okay. um, and then that gets floor jacked. We put at least about two large welds on it. Usually they're about four inches a piece. Mm -hmm. So that is all the way between the riser tube and the IS system itself. Okay. The next point after that, we, we slap a coat of paint over it just so that you know it's not bare welds that right. are going down the road and easily corrodible. From that point, we're just plumbing the axis. The disc brakes that you guys install are electro-hydraulic or hydroelectric or? Hydromatic. Ultramatic. <laughs> yeah, so electric <laughs> over hydraulic yeah, yeah. is the setting that is on your truck. So right. that's one thing that you definitely want to make sure that you have prior to installation. Most of the time we're dealing with trucks that are about 2015 and up, but if you don't have that electric over hydraulic setting, oftentimes you'll have to get an aftermarket brake controller. So there's something about the brake controller that varies the voltage differently when it knows there's hydraulics on the other end? Exactly, yep. Oh, I learned my new thing today. Some Factory controllers, sometimes they send a false error code mm -hmm. to the hydraulic actuator that we mount in there. That's only on the, your, like your GMCs, your Fords, but there's an easy way around that. We actually okay. stock a little module that interrupts that false error code and 
you're fine after that. But that setting is the key that you have to have, that electric over hydraulic. So you, you plumb the hydraulic and I think the pump normally goes up in the front? Yep, usually in a battery compartment. Yeah. The one we use is a Hydrostar. It's very compact, but it's about the size of a hardback book, so it fits in most places. Oh, nice. It's not bulky, it's not clunky. So we've got them on, we've got the brakes plumbed and set up. Now you think you guys also do something with the alignment? You guys make sure they're aligned versus just smacking them on there. Yes, so that's one of the benefits of the independent suspension is that each individual wheel is alignable and it can be attained through pulling it forward. We can adjust the toe on it, we can pull it forward, we can shim the IS accordingly to get the exact alignment on it. Um, so that's why we tell people it's good to come here, you know, as though you're planning on towing it so that the weight is all set. Because sometimes, right. you know, if you threw a large amount of weight that could obviously affect it a little bit you know we're talking you know if you had a thousand pounds added to it you know like, a, like a 980 pound motorcycle <laughs> <laughs> yeah something something that in fact it's always wise to come fully you know fully loaded or how you plan on typically towing our motorcycle is in the back of the rv while it's here so that's mm -hmm. good that's a good thing to have yeah. loaded how you're going to do it absolutely We have you go on a test drive, just a quick around the block um, test drive to make sure that they are indeed working, that your truck is indeed compatible. Uh, whoa. Yeah, brakes are working. Brakes work. <laughs> <laughs> and then just that you develop the right feel for it too. Yeah. It's about a second and a half delay from when you oh, hit the yeah. pedal to when you actually start to feel the tr trailer tugging a little bit, um, yeah. the pull from behind you, which is to be expected. Hopefully you're, you're braking before you really need to anyway. <laughs> not slamming on yep, the brakes. But. Exactly. And make no mistake, if you slam if it's an emergency brake and you hit the brakes on disc brakes, they'll they'll lock up like yeah. like you've never felt before. <laughs> yeah. So as far as settings, gain gain control, people usually come in with a higher setting, usually around eight or up. We say, yeah. you know, maybe it's good to have it at around eight for the first couple, maybe a hundred miles or so until you develop the true feel for it. Mm -hmm. Then you want to adjust it down accordingly, down to, you know, ideally about six so that you're running through pads at a relatively normal, normal rate. rate. Yep. Yeah. We always did the feel. You don't want the trailer pushing you mm -hmm. when you're trying to stop and you also don't want the trailer yanking the truck. So it's kind of a, you want them to be in coordination basically. It's, it's a feel thing. Sure thing. Yeah. And a lot of people are doing that just in the straightaway outside of our lot. Experienced towers, they essentially do it right then and you know, they, they got their test, they can yeah. get it right away. So. It's exciting. No. So we're getting ready to do our post-install test ride. I was just laying underneath the RV admiring the new suspension. Uh, yep. Brakes are working. Brakes work. <laughs> <laughs> So we're pretty excited. We have the sensor log running here with the accelerometer, so we'll record all that and put it on the screen for you. I am pumped. Can you tell how pumped Daisy is? Daisy's so excited. Not this again, she says. I mean, I don't know if I'm just being optimistic, but I already, already don't, I already yeah, don't I feel any any so, vibration in the floor. Right even, even this section I did last time. feel on your feet is totally different. Totally. Now this, the camera's probably still shaking quite a bit. Yeah. It's mounted to our island, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're coming up on the railroad. Holy cow. Wow. <laughs> that is a big, that big is, difference. That is a big difference. I mean, before you'd feel like it would almost knock your feet off, yeah. off the floor. Now it was just, you, you felt a little bit, but it was very muted. You can tell it's still a rough road, but I'm not like having my teeth, like my, my teeth aren't shaking. No. The fact that she's laying down like that. Good girl. She did not do last time and she would not do. 
It passes. Daisy would give it a thumbs up, but she has no thumbs. It passes the Daisy test. <laughs> I knew we'd feel a difference, but I didn't know it would be that big of a difference. I didn't. I was I was thinking, okay, yeah, we'll feel it, but that was totally different. It, it really was. My whole body was tensed up last time, like bracing myself, hoping that I mm -hmm. don't fall over. Yeah. And I didn't feel that way. Daisy was fine with it this time around. And going over the big things like the railroad tracks. The railroad tracks were nothing. And the um, what joints? What were the, they? the expansion joints expansion on, on the joints uh, highway. And stuff like that. And that last stretch of road that was terrible the first time around was we knew we were going over stuff, but it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. It really wasn't a big deal. So the next part of our test is going to be checking this out in the truck, actual traveling. And we're going to do that after we do some measurements. Yeah, and we'll then be... all day tomorrow, we're going to be testing it out too. So we're going to fill you in as we go tomorrow. We are getting ready to do our first tow with the new suspension. The way it felt just riding around Inside, doing yeah. that loop. I cannot wait to see what this feels like. So let's do it, get on with it. Let's do it. <laughs> so I'm gonna play around with the settings. I'll let you know where we end up. Right mm -hmm. now we're on low and 7.5 and we do have it set for the proper hydraulic over electric. Let's go. I gotta say that everyone at Moride is just so awesome nice. Awesome people. So awesome. You know what I feel is different already is like, okay, that pot, that uh, manhole I just ran over. We ran normally over. Normally, I would we... feel front wheel, rear wheel, and then I would feel the trailer. Dun, dun, dun. We ran I don't over feel the trailer. At I didn't all. know we ran over a pothole. A manhole cover. Oh. So it was, but it was it was raised, so we'll feel some more. But I don't feel any. I don't feel the, the trailer at all. I did notice there's a little bit of a difference in the timing of the brake. So. On the electric brakes, there's a little bit of a delay, but it's quicker because you're waiting for the magnet to stick to the side of the drum and get dragged over and, and, and put the brakes on. But there's there's a little bit of a delay between the voltage hitting and then the hydraulic pump kicking on, maybe like a half a second. Mm -hmm. So that's taking a little getting used to. I noticed when I was coming to a stop there that just a little bit of a delay. So when you push, when you apply the brake, takes about a half a second or so before you start to feel it work yeah if I'm like here where I'm braking gradually mm -hmm. you know as soon as you start to touch the brake and the actuator gets some voltage mm -hmm. it fires up and it's kind of like online and ready whereas if I am stopping more quickly it takes just a bit of a second for it to kick in but mm -hmm. then it kicks in harder so that that takes a little getting yeah, used to. Yeah, and and Brian told us about that that would happen. Here comes some railroad tracks. Okay, ready? Here we go. We're going over there at thirty miles an hour. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, that is amazing! Holy cow! I am impressed. I had no idea. In one half mile, make... turn left on East she Jackson she Boulevard. Doesn't even care. Tomorrow full day of travel will really be the true test mm -hmm. so today felt like Christmas I was anxious to get up this morning <laughs> and tow this thing which is really strange but uh yeah. yeah I'm excited to see how this day goes with this new suspension yesterday was so cool yeah yeah we're gonna be hitting I-80 today <laughs> I-80 it has been for the past three years it has been really some of the worst stretch of roads that yeah. we ever travel on so this is a true test excited we're excited to drive on crappy roads okay <laughs> so here we go normally this part of the road we've ridden this section many many times yeah. uh, back and forth to grand design from Elkhart campground and it's it's a lot better yeah it's kind of hard to quantify because I can, I can see the bumps, I can feel them like right there. But in the past, every one of these would be like 
Like that was a big one. That was, yeah, that those was a big were, one those too. Those pretty big, but they're so muted compared to what they used to be. And I don't, I gotta admit, I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't know how the trailer suspension affects the truck ride that much. Yeah. But I don't know why it does, but I really like it. <laughs> it jarring. just takes away that jarring feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's very interesting. So here's another expansion joint coming up here. Here we go. Big one, too. Yeah, this yeah. is... That, that was a little bit rough, that was, but yeah. that one in the past has really beaten the crap out of us. Hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. Are you right here? Now you can edit more. Get back to work. I am. When we got in last night, it was starting to get dark and we were tired and so we figured we would just um, recap our thoughts on our first travel day with the Moride Independent Suspension today. Freaking awesome. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Recap done. No, I mean, seriously, when we started this whole process, I knew it would improve the ride in here. I knew it would improve the longevity mm -hmm. of, our, of our fifth wheel and that we might feel some improvement in the truck. I had no idea it would be that good. Right. In the uh, truck. In the truck. That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't put those two together. And, you know, to me, it kind of makes sense. It's, it's way back here and we're way mm -hmm. up there, but all that translates up there, even through any hitch. So it's really quite an amazing difference. Yeah, we were in the, we were in the truck for about six hours yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so again, we were on Indiana roads and Ohio roads and you know, normally take a big beating on those roads and it was a lot better. It was, it was so much better. Mm -hmm. There were some, uh, some expansion joints and things where I would say bump and then we'd go over it and be like, <laughs> it's like no big deal. But obviously it's not gonna take out everything. You're still gonna feel some, but yeah. it's a huge, huge improvement. The braking was a ginormous improvement. Yeah. Yeah. So, what about jack placement? Yeah, that was a question we had too. Without axles now, where do we put the jack? And the cool thing is there's a spot right on the bottom of the axle where you can jack up just that one wheel. You don't have to jack the whole frame up. So, yeah. and that's what they recommend doing. And that's what they recommend. Mm -hmm. We'll put that on the screen and show you where that is. We're super, super mm -hmm. impressed. I feel better. Like I feel, I feel good about it. Like you know, not that I had any issues prior to getting the more independent suspension, but now I just I feel like I more secure. I, like, I feel I a sense of security that I didn't have before. If you do any research online on suspensions. You're going to see tons of broken leaf springs and broken mm -hmm. hangers, and we don't have those anymore. They're gone. Maybe it's because <laughs> I wasn't with you when you had the broken leaf spring. So <laughs> yeah. I don't have as much of the fear about yeah. that happening. <laughs> and along with that, you don't have all the noise associated uh, when you take sharp turns and the axles, you know, try to shift a little bit. In the past, those leaf springs and hangers would go clank, 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 clank. Oh, yeah, we had people asking about that. Yeah, like, that. what's that noise? Yeah. Because it sounds horrible, especially with three axles. Yeah, yeah, as, as newbies, when we first got it, we were like, what the heck is that noise? But yeah, so, yeah. Well, yeah, we don't have that anymore. Obviously, with three axles, aside from some magic thing that turns all the axles, you're going to have some axle drag. You're still going to drag some tires, so you want to be careful on sharp turns on pavement especially, but it's not as noisy and it seems very smooth. I can't think of one bad thing I about think this most thing. importantly, it passed the daisy test. You can't, <laughs> you can't fake a dog's reaction to a situation, and the fact that she laid down when we did that second test drive yeah. after it was installed, to me, spoke volumes because mm -hmm. she was terrified the first time yeah so it was just amazing to me that she did that so i i was like oh there it is sealed the deal daisy approved <laughs> so we're going to have links and things below we're not an affiliate or anything so just call them directly be sure to tell them that you saw our video we sent you that kind of gives them a little feedback on how they found out about this but we're super impressed. We hope you are too. Any questions, put them below. Be sure to click the like button. Be sure to click the subscribe button and the bell and all that good stuff. That's good to get the aggression out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, they pretty good to us here, so there's no aggression. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Turn right on Sterling Avenue. I was trying to talk. GPS. Austin, you're pretty quiet. Just 
Are you happy now, puppy dog? You're me you dropped this. Oh, I need that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> gloves. I dropped my gloves. I thought, you thought they were socks. I'm like, why did you drop socks? <laughs> I'm just going to have extra care. Well, we are living out of bags right now, so. <laughs> He's here. Usually, Turn left at the traffic light. I swear, every time I start to talk, she, stop, she starts yeah. to talk. Oh, we're talking food? My yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so what are we doing here in this garage with our big Mo? Right, and more importantly, why are there no wheels on it? <laughs> I think you're... Can you see? <laughs> I do notice, and they did mention this, that there's a little in bit of a difference. one and a quarter miles, turn left on East see? Jackson Boulevard. <laughs> She's rude. Highway, this is so... Whoa, we're turning. <laughs> we're turning. <laughs> Good thing there was a couch there to catch me. Hydraulic brake, so you can probably get them at any auto port store. Port? Ports. Dang it, that was really good I too. <laughs> <laughs> Got it? Got it. All right. <laughs> That's our guy. He did all this. 